How easily can you bypass the native default Microsoft Defender antivirus that is freely available and installed on just about every single Windows operating system, host, device, and endpoint? We've been on a little bit of a kick in the recent videos just trying to see what command and control frameworks or what offensive tooling might be able to circumvent and evade and get past that antivirus. And that is the trend I want to keep rolling on in this video where we get to experiment and play with Hoax Shell. But before we dive in, I do want to give some quick love and support and a generous thank you to the sponsor of this video, and we'll roll the promo. PlexTrack is the premier cybersecurity reporting and collaboration platform that makes penetration testers, red teamers, and cybersecurity teams more efficient, effective, and proactive. With PlexTrack, you can eliminate the dull and boring drudgery of report writing, so you can focus on what's really important. Hacking. The engagement, the assessment, and the campaign. And it's not just for offense. PlexTrack is a collaboration portal between both red and blue teams to facilitate effective purple teaming and faster remediation. While coordinating between multiple team members, you easily aggregate findings, pull in reusable content from write-up databases and content libraries, and track and measure progress in real time. You can import assets from common CSV files, Nmap, Nessus, and many of your other favorite tools. PlexTrack boasts 25 plus integrations, and that list is always growing. You can do even more with PlexTrack's runbooks, with scripts mapped to the Myra Attack framework or plans from Atomic Red Team and Scythe, or assessments built off of the CIS controls and benchmarks. And of course, show the impact with PlexTrack's analytics and visualizations. Customize your reports with your team's logo and details, and with a single click, export your report and send it off to the client. Spend more time hacking and less time reporting. Learn how you can boost your team's efficiency by 30% and cut reporting time by up to 65% with PlexTrack. Seriously, check them out. I have great colleagues and peers that use PlexTrack every day for reporting. Sign up for a demo and claim your free month of PlexTrack right now at https jh.io slash PlexTrack. Huge thanks to PlexTrack for sponsoring this video. Alrighty, so I am inside of my Kali Linux virtual machine, and I'm here on GitHub checking out this repository under this user for Hoax Shell. Now, this is pretty slick. I've seen this around on the Twitterverse, and I would recommend if folks aren't tracking on Twitter, there's some super cool offensive security, hey, pen testing, ethical hacking, and a whole lot of blue team ins and response and threat intel you can track down on there. But this is Hoax Shell. Hoax Shell is an unconventional Windows reverse shell currently undetected by Microsoft Defender and possibly other AV solutions, solely based on HTTP or HTTPS traffic. Tool is easy to use, it generates its own PowerShell payload and supports encryption with SSL. Now, it has been a little bit of time since this has been released. You can see some commits dating back to about three months ago. However, some might very just well be, hey, one month ago or 27 days, 28 days, whatever the case may be. So we will kick the tires and go see, does this stick up to the test? Is this still bypassing Microsoft Defender even on an updated Windows 11 machine? Looks like it has been tested on fully updated Windows 11 Enterprise, Windows Server 2016 Data Center, and Windows 10 Pro boxes. You can see some video and screenshots down below but we will just go ahead and play with it. There's some screenshots, but hey, let's go ahead and roll through the install. Should be super simple, should be pretty easy. Hey, we clone the repository, go ahead and install the requirements, and then just run this thing. It's a nice and easy Python script. So let's fire up a command line, and what I will do is just go ahead and slap in that git clone command. I will end up changing this to be using the git schema, so it does SSH or whatever the shenanigans that it tends to do, and I zoomed in way too much. <laughs> but there we go, we can go ahead and clone this, and now I should have the hoax shell folder here, which I do. And this is all the stuff that we just saw previously, but ultimately we need to go ahead and install everything out of the requirements.txt file. We'll use pip to do that, but let me just show you what that thing is. I'll cat out those requirements. Looks like it just needs IPython, so okay, pretty simple. Let me go ahead and use pip 3, and I'll use install tack r, so we know that we're going to be retrieving a requirements.txt file, and we'll go ahead and pass that in. Read in that file, and it should just go ahead and install stuff for me. Nice and easy. Okay, now that that has finished, we should be able to go ahead and play with the hoax shell, but we do need to mark it as executable, and we'll go ahead and work with it. If you want to trust this thing, you know, actually validate, it's not going to be running any crazy malicious code here on your machine, you can fire up the source code, open in a text editor, and see what this thing does. 
scroll through it, take a look at some of the sweetness, a uh, whole lot of awesome argument parsing. Uh, I'm assuming there's going to be some pretty dope ASCII art and <laughs> I like that function. Chill. Hey, just pass. Don't do anything. But honestly, hey, super quick cursory look. Look, I'm not going to see any fork bombs or RM, TAC RF or shred in here. Like th this is this is all good. Let's go ahead and run this thing. Uh, did I just mark that as executable? I believe I just did. Yeah. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and run Hoax Shell. All right. Looks like we need to provide a local host IP address. We can supply that with TAC S. So let me grab my current IP address. I am working inside of my virtual machine, so my current IP is 192.168.111.138. We can go ahead and grab that. And let's see what else I need to provide after I give it that tech S. Whoa, not a whole lot more. Looks like I've spat out this giant PowerShell syntax, all this encoded command, the payload here. And this is just, as I mentioned, PowerShell tech E, just that encoded syntax. And it is all base 64, so let's go ahead and scroll down and grab all this thing. Now, what I want to do is go ahead and grab a virtual machine. I'll spin up the previous Windows 11 machine I was just using, playing with Havoc in the command and control framework, because that is a fully up-to-date Windows 11 box. I'll let this thing boot and get back to you. All right, looks like I am here greeted at my login screen. We'll go ahead and log in. And just to drive the point home here, I'll go ahead and move my face. You'll notice this is Windows 11 Enterprise Evaluation. Uh, if I go ahead and just for the sake of showcasing, uh, we are on the absolute latest updates. I'll go ahead and check out the Windows Update settings here. If I go ahead and check for updates, there should be none available for me because we are retrieving, working with, absolutely rolling with the latest updates. There it is. Okay, you're up to date. Absolutely. Last checked just now. So we can also verify that the virus and threat protection Microsoft Defender is alive and kicking here. I'll go ahead and scroll down to the virus and threat protection settings. You can see real-time protection is on. I do have cloud delivery protection and the automatic sample submission and all these things kind of turned off. If just so they don't rat out, you know, hey, we're playing and poking around with some of this offensive tooling. Now I'll go ahead and actually move this to the side and we'll get Kali Linux rolling on the other side just as well. And I'll admit here, this is uncharted territory for me. I don't know if this will succeed or not, but we've got Hoax Shell waiting on the side and let's fire up a PowerShell commandlet. Uh, just open up, uh, Windows Terminal's fine, yep. And let's see if I can zoom in on this as it starts up PowerShell. I said command there, I should have meant session. And now I'm slapping all this in. The moment I hit enter, fingers crossed. Ooh, look at that. Oh, that's awesome. Payload execution verified, stabilizing the command prompt, and hoax shell has a shell. Well, dang. Prime back open this uh, Windows Defender box, or inside the Windows 11 virtual machine. Windows Defender is still, hey, absolutely letting it spin right by. So sweet. Let's go ahead and check out what Kali Linux has over here for us. Uh, we can see Hoax Shell has got this. And what am I doing? Well, I guess I can run help. And <laughs> look, that's it, man. You can run any payloads or uh, honestly, now we've got PowerShell. Like here, I can control L to clear the screen. Uh, do I have like a limited command size? Is that why it's not expanding that out? It might be probably a, just trying to detect the screen size or the terminal width just as I was working with it earlier but I can PWD I can go ahead and run who am I I can net whatever net user I have a reverse shell I, I am interacting on that target and Windows Defender is none the wiser kind of slick Hey, sorry, uh, John from the future here. Didn't want to interrupt, but I was going through editing and I was thinking, you know, there were a couple comments in the Havoc C2 framework video where folks just weren't really digging the fact that, hey, cloud protection and some of the other Defender settings were turned off while testing. I guess that's not a good enough litmus test or thinking, yo, maybe Defender doesn't have all the juice when it's not getting that extra support. So let's go ahead and try to run this just as well with uh, virus and threat protection back open and actually turning those settings on. I've not done this, so I don't know if this will work, but... Uh, it's worth a try. Let's go ahead and toggle cloud protection back on, automatic sample submission, sure, whatever, tamper protection, yeah, okay, okay. There are no exclusions, so uh, again, this should be 
everything. Um, and let's kick the tires here. I'm going to go ahead and spin up Hoke Shell. Uh, now we have a big giant PowerShell payload. And let's grab this syntax. I'll right click and copy. Fire up PowerShell. And let's slap it in and see if we get our callback. Scroll down here. So Hoke Shell should hopefully get something. And we'll see. I'll move my face out of the way in case we get a defender alert. Slapping this in. Hit and enter. Still comes through. Dig it. Let's see. Can I run some commands? Good old who am I? Yep. Good old net user. Yep. Good old PWD. Obviously, if I were to do some shenanigans that Defender probably wouldn't like. Oh, hey, you can see even on this shell, the script is getting some AMSI. Hey, invoke Mimi Cats. Bad. But we still have our reverse shell. So kind of digging that. Super cool. Looks all good, even with all those buttons, toggles switched on. Defender letting it cruise by. See ya. So, that's ultimately everything that I kind of wanted to showcase here, but now that we're here, like, cool, we lit off the fireworks, might as well kind of pour in and see what this payload's all about. This is kind of slick. I want to grab that base 64, and I could very well just grab this on the Kali Linux machine itself, uh, but let's zoom in here, create a new little terminal here, and let's just make like, oh, what is that payload.b64? Pasting in all this base64, we can try and go ahead and decode this. I'll use base64 tag D on payload base64. And whew, uh, let me go ahead and tee that out to a, another file. So this is like decoded.ps1. We're going to assume, hey, it's probably PowerShell syntax, right? So let's fire that thing up. Oh, and this is it. Looks like we have, okay, what we're calling back to. Um, this is my IP address as I entered it on port 8080. So we just chose that on its own. Uh, that's defined as this S variable in PowerShell. I'm going to assume this I is maybe for an identifier. Looks like a GUID maybe. I, I could totally be wrong there. But P is actually going to end up using HTTP as sort of a schema. And then V as a variable is defined. We invoke web requests, use basic parsing, URI at my specific HTTP host and port slash fc 0 b 61 etc. Hosting all of this here for me. And it looks like the headers is where it might be actually retrieving some interesting stuff given a unique identifier or that I value there. Now, if I go ahead and check out what this loop is doing, looks like we are in an infinite loop with while true, dollar sign C, we continue to retrieve new portions here. And this is interesting. You'll note, hey, that very, very first syntax or the hex values defined for our I variable looks like it just gets the shell. And then this one here is the second portion uh, continuing to retrieve data, but we get the content. Okay. If there is no result from it, if it's not equal to none, then we go ahead and try an invoke expression or IEX as that PowerShell commandlet aliases. Uh, error action is S, so I'm going to assume that silently continue. But this is kind of weird to me. I'm not quite sure what we're looking at <laughs> with some of those random letters and characters. That's wild. What does that end up doing? IEX C being the result of it, and then there's nonsense here is that part of its detection portion or it looks like there's supposed to be half of a command here it's doing another request right because it needs to use something being set to i and then the body which we retrieve and then the get bytes and join sleep for just under a second here interesting unless this is supposed to be part of the loop that it, it has the closing curly brace, and that's part of the if statement. So that noise and nonsense here might just be a portion that it's using to get data in and out. Uh, am I wrong? Am I stupid? I mean, I know I am, but joins it all together. E and R. Are E and R retrieved? No. That must be from what the server response with Hochschild actually responds. It, that IEX invoke expression is going to end up creating some other variables that will be end up being used as part of the response here. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this thing does. I was just scrolling through the source code moments ago to be able to, you know, kind of see, but now I'm just super curious. You could use an encrypted shell, of course, if you wanted to with your own, hey, silly self-signed certificate or anything, but <laughs> look at all these arguments you could give it. Yeah, you could do so much more. Print banner, it's got that cool stuff. 
the nice little colors there. Help message, that's what we ran when we saw our help command. But encode payload is just, you know, how it's defined. What is that print payload raw going to give me? Is it something that might be different from what we end up seeing? If I use help again, what is raw payload? Ooh. Okay, so this looks a little bit better. Maybe I did something weird with my base 64 or, or some shenanigans. Let's uh, try and add some new lines after all of these semicolons and let's set this syntax to PowerShell. So now we're doing everything that we've seen previously with a little bit more sense made to it. And we invoke expression as we did before, but retrieve as outstring given the input object R and then communicate right back to it posting the data back huh was my base 64 weird because hey like i copied it off of like windows or something uh i don't know we don't need to beautify this honestly that, that that's all that i wanted to showcase builds out the uuid has a certain amount of pulse Ooh, that's kind of slick and we could kind of poke around and explore if we really wanted to, but I won't bore you going through all of this right here, right now. Um, this is, again, uncharted territory for me. I did want to validate, hey, look, it's still cruising right past Windows Defender, and that is pretty slick. Uh, we got a little bit of the knowledge and know-how as to how <laughs> this was working. I dig that move on, mate. Uh, but that's so slick not something that is detected by Windows Defender. Uh, the default native antivirus, even on Windows 11, is fully updated, fully patched, got everything already installed between, you know, updates and new things to pull down. It's all, all done. Look at that. Cool, super quick video. Hey, just wanted to showcase this in case you haven't heard of Hoax Shell. That might be something fun to play with uh, at the moment, undetected by Microsoft Defender. Maybe some other antivirus solutions are picking it up. I don't know. Uh, being that PowerShell syntax and sort of that, hey, back and forth thing, it's like cool. Uh, it, not something an executable that you could just slap into virus total or run through any other sandbox or analyzer. Well, it's doing its thing with, with Python and PowerShell, just handing data back and forth. Slick. Wanted to raise awareness, wanted to bring that education to you, and I thought maybe that's some cool, nice little fit in for stuff that we do for ethical hacking, penetration testing, red teaming, etc. With that said, I do want to give some of that, more of that love to PlexTrack. Huge thanks for sponsoring this video, and I'm looking forward to the next one where we can jam together. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. See you in the next video.